Hi there. My name is Thomas Jackson, otherwise known as Stonewall Jackson. You are probably wondering why I am wearing Napoleon's costume. Well, this is a free software and so we don't have much budget. It was either Napoleon or Einstein. I didn't want to have gray hair and a weird mustache. So I chose Napoleon. Hey! I invented relativity, you son of a... Don't mind him, he's dead. I assume you are here to learn about me, about my life, and of course about my heroic fighting in the Civil War. Let's jump straight into it. Never mind. This isn't comfortable. I was born January 21, 1824 in Carlsberg, a city in modern-day West Virginia. We were four siblings so I never had peace and quiet. Perhaps all the fighting between us enabled me to be one of the greatest military generals. Anyways, when I was two years old my father and sister Elizabeth died of typhoid fever. What a horrible disease it was. And then my mother married this jerk, who we all despised. So we were sent to live with relatives in West Virginia. There's where I began my studies. I enrolled myself into the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, New York. I wasn't a very good student. I was much older, and my previous education was very limited. The other kids teased me. Nevertheless. I worked my butt off and managed to graduate 17th out of a class of 59 students. How ha 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 I graduated number one in my class. That buffoon. And just as I graduated, the Mexican-American War broke out. And guess who they called? I was a brave soldier indeed. Under General Winfield Scott, I joined the 1st U.S. Artillery as a second lieutenant. I commanded a small group of soldiers, nothing impressive. I participated in the siege of Veracruz, and the battles of Contreras, Chapultepec and Mexico City. It was actually during the war in Mexico that I met Robert E. Lee, with whom I'd one day join military forces. The war ended in 1846 and I was considered a hero. My rank was promoted to Brevet Major, and I continued to serve in the military in New York and Florida. I retired from military life in 1851, as I was offered a professorship at the highly regarded Virginia Military Institute. There, I taught natural and experimental philosophy, as well as artillery tactics. I was quite good. I was always interested in science, so I made sure to incorporate the subject into my teaching. My philosophy classes often included physics, astronomy, and acoustics. For some strange reason my students never liked me. My colleagues seemed to think it was because I would only teach with my right arm raised. You see, the length of my arms was not the same, and I didn't want my students to laugh at me. The doctors called me foolish and claimed I have hypochondria. The false believed that there is something wrong with me, but I disagreed. Now the sad part. I married the love of my life in 1853, Eleanor Junkin. She died one year later giving birth to our stillborn son. Stillborn means the fetus died in the uterus. But I got back up on my feet, and I got remarried to Marianna Morrison in 1857. In 1859 we were blessed with a beautiful daughter, who died one month after her birth. Following these events, I decided that I should go back to military life. My first order of duty was to serve as an officer in the famous execution of John Brown at Harper's Ferry. Three years after the death of my second child, I was gifted with another beautiful daughter, whom we named Julia. Julia Jackson. But I didn't get a chance to spend much time with her. 
the civil war broke out. Excuse me, I ate some chili before. The Civil War. Oy vey. The battle that would test the spirit of every man and the agony which he is willing to go through. It was a battle for pride, for principle, for power, and for a purse. Who was to tell the South what to do? How can a unified nation allow slaves? How dare the North place high taxes on the South? And how dare the South request special taxes from the North? These were some of the questions that led to the Civil War. Virginia, my hometown, seceded from the Union in the spring of 1861. Although I wish they'd stay with the Union, I showed my support for the Confederacy and was eager to defend my people. I was well known by the time of the Civil War, so I was received with a pretty high-ranking Brigadier General. The first battle of the war granted me my famous nickname. It was in the first battle of Bull Run, 1861. I led my army to form a defensive line against a Union attack, placing myself in front of them. I stood still as the Union was approaching, which led General B. to shout, There is Jackson, standing like a stone wall. The name stuck, and I was forever known as Stonewall Jackson. I was later promoted to Major General, for my courage, on the field. One year later I was ordered to join General Robert E. Lee's army. This was after I launched a successful campaign at defending Western Virginia from Union invasion. The Second Battle of Bull Run was a great success. It was in August of 1862, and I managed to trick Union General John Pope. I convinced him that I had begun to retreat which allowed my friend James Longstreet to launch a missile assault against them. This forced them to retreat. What irony! Although not recorded in history books, this was my official victory dance. Next came the Battle of Anti Town. Are we almost finished? Almost. Antietam was definitely one of the toughest battles in the war. Although General Lee ordered the Army of Virginia to withdraw across the Potomac River, I was more than ready to hold the Confederate troops in defensive position. If it were up to me, we may have even won that battle. My last heroic battle was that of Chancellorsville, in May of 1863. I sneaked up on General Hook's army and hit them from the rear. We killed so many of their soldiers that they were forced to withdraw. However, good things always come to an end. Oh boy, we are coming to the good part. Mua ha 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 ha. It was May 10th, 1863 when I stared death in the eyes. It wasn't very pretty. Eight days earlier I was shot by friendly fire. My last words remain my legacy. They were, and still are. Let us cross over the river, and, rest under the shade of trees. <laughs>